Hey everyone, so the next how-to video I'm working on here is a MySensors rain gauge. Um, this video format's going to be a little bit different than how I normally do it. I'm going to go through it uh, at a higher level, and the main reason for that is, is I'm modifying an existing rain gauge. There's a couple different options you have if you want to make this project yourself. Just check out the link in the video description. There's some 3D print options. I'm just using a, a tipping bucket on the MySensor store, or you could even customize your own like I've done here. But anyway, I'm going to show you how to put it all together at a high level, and you can customize it or modify it for your needs. But first, I'm going to show you a quick demo. So here I just pulled it up on my Impure Home app here to show you some of these things. So um, obviously it shows the rain. Um, and then when I trigger it here, um, notice it is updating the millimeters per hour. And then, whoops, don't have data mine turned on yet. And then it shows me the total millimeters for the day. Uh, the Vera app um, shows a little bit more detail than the Impera Home app. Um, next over here we have the uh, range triggered sensor. So this is a customizable threshold that you can set. So you can set the time that it looks for, so the number of days or hours actually, um, and then how much rain uh, it needs to hit before it's triggered. So I can, I think I have it set it for two millimeters here. Um, in maybe three days, but um, that's just for this demo. You could set it for, you know, 20 millimeters over five days and then maybe use it to trigger irrigation or something like that. Uh, I've also added a temperature and a humidity sensor. That's with the DHT22. Uh, and then a, a light sensor. Um, that is the BH1750 sensor. Before I go any farther, I just wanted to give a, a huge thank you to Jim. Uh, or Bulldog Lowell on the MySensors forum. Uh, he is the uh, creator and inventor of this. Um, made all this possible. I just made the video. Uh, I just want to do a how-to because I found it so cool and useful. So thank you so much, Jim. And also, obviously, Henrik um, for creating MySensors. So thanks, thanks, guys. Couldn't have done it without you. So the reason I'm so excited about this sensor um, is because I'm going to use it in combination with the irrigation controller. So I can determine how much rain I've had in the past five days, and then I can alter my irrigation based on that rain data. I'm also using the light sensor to control my blinds, so when it gets too hot or too much light, I can lower my blinds automatically. And the temperature and humidity sensor, I'm using those to determine um, if I lower my blinds. So if it's over a certain temperature and the light is bright enough, which I know is direct sunlight, then I can lower the blinds on that side of the house um, and keep it cooler. The other cool thing about this rain gauge is it will save your data every hour into memory. Um, so if there's a power outage, it will be able to restore all that rain data for the last uh, five days once power is restored. Okay, so now let's go ahead and take a look at how this device is set up. So here is the inside of my device here. Um, this is the outside cover. It's just a Taylor it's actually a wireless rain gauge already. I found it didn't work very well, but I, I got it on sale for, uh, I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was, it was really cheap. So I was able to take apart the inside of their rain gauge and put in the my sensors electronics. So like I said, I just modified an existing rain gauge, but there is an option to 3D print. Um, currently, as I'm filming this video, it's still in development and testing, but um, go ahead and check out the link in the video description. Uh, for more info on that. Um, when it's ready, it'll be posted to the MySensor site. There's also a rain gauge tipping bucket posted on the MySensor store. So if you want to use that, that should work fine as well. And I'm also going to show you how I calculated out the values, the rain value. So you can use basically any tipping bucket that you can find. Okay, so now I'm just going to give a quick overview of how I wired everything up. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on soldering uh, and the wiring of everything. Uh, I've done that in a couple of my other videos, which I'll uh, link to here in the video, um, if you need more instructions on how to do that. But um, it's actually quite simple to wire, uh, and the wiring diagram is on the MySensors site. Uh, the link to that is in the video description. So instead, I'm just going to kind of show how I, my thought process of putting this together, um, and then you can figure out um, how you want to do yours uh, when you customize uh, yours. Um, or if you use the 3D printed model, you can um, obviously wire that in as well. So the first thing I have over here is the light sensor. Um, if I could do this over again, um, I'd probably do it a little bit differently. You can see it's uh, starting to rust out a little bit. Uh, it's got some dirt on it. So this has been on the side of my house 
uh, for a little while now. Um, and I think um, that this light sensor, I just put some clear coating, some polyurethane on it. Um, I think it's probably going to degrade over time, probably a little faster than I expected. So if I could do it over again, I'd put a, a piece of clear plastic around it and find some way to, to weather seal it. Um, but these sensors are really cheap, so I guess when it does die, I'll just be able to replace it fairly easily. And then um, one of the ways I can do that is I made all of this kind of modular, if you will. Um, so I soldered these wires and ran them through the bottom of the rain gauge. Um, and then on my PCB board here, I um, put in my header connectors here. So I can just pull out these um, wires if I want to without having to desolder anything. So you can see I've got two sets here. Um, some of these are, I guess, male and female, so I could never accidentally reverse the cables in the wrong slots. Um, it's totally up to you if you want to do that. I'm just um, prone to doing that, I've noticed, so uh, I decided to reverse them. And then down here I have my DHT-22. So that goes along here. I found that there's a little bit of water dripping past, so I put in just, this is an old milk, plastic milk jug here that I just put as a shield to hopefully keep some of that water out. Uh, and then I also hot glued the, um, the sensor, being careful not to cover it, but just to go around it. And then I put this little strip of plastic, it's just more milk jug here, around it to try and shield it. I had this uh, originally mounted into a board, um, and I found it was a little bit too low, so now I've raised it up with some some brackets to get it uh, up off and get some more airflow in there, because I, th I think it was playing with the humidity and temperature sensing results. Okay, moving on, we have our tipping bucket. So that came included with my sensor, so there's just a, a little magnetic contact switch here, and when, I, when it goes back and forth, it'll just toggle it. Um, so I just wired that into my Arduino here with... Um, additional um, header pins here so I could just connect it and these are my DuPont cables um, and then my Arduino Pro Mini here is also connected in um, with header connector strips so I can remove that if I ever need to. So it's fairly modular um, if anything ever goes wrong it's easy to replace. Um, I have my standard my sensors radio here um, which also can be removed and then I just soldered on my um, longer antenna. Um, I went into in a couple of my other more videos into more detail on this, um, but long story short, it really helps improve my communications with my devices. Um, so that's pretty much it. Um, obviously I have my 3 volt, 3.3 volt power for my radio, and everything else is just connected into 5 volts. Now I'm just going to do a quick walkthrough of the code here and highlight some things that you may want to change. So the first thing is, is the node ID. So you can set a custom node ID here. In my case, I've done 24. Um, that's just what my rain gauge node is going to be. Or you can just set it to all caps auto, and it will assign one for you. If you want to change the name or version, you would do that here. Dwell time is the amount of time it's going to, um, in milliseconds, it's going to pause the program before it sends another radio transmission. So this just allows uh, for smoother communication um, gives the capacitor some time to recharge uh, on your radio. Uh, next we have debug, DT, or DHT on, Lux on, and use daily. So these are all options here that you can either comment out with these two um, forward slashes or uncomment by deleting them. And then this means that this part of the code will run. So debug is obviously debugging. So you need to have this plugged into your computer via the serial monitor. And then it would show you different debug values that are programmed in throughout the code. Uh, next we have DHT on. So if you're going to use the DHT um, temperature humidity sensor, you'd want to uncomment this. If you're not going to, go ahead and just add the two slashes. Same for the LUX sensor. Um, if you want to use it, uncomment it. If not, then um, comment it. This use daily. So um, there's five variables that are sent to your controller and each of those contains a daily value of rain. Um, so if you have used daily uncommented, so right here it's commented, it's going to send each individual day value. So each value will be separate. 
if you comment this out it's going to be a cumulative value so it's going to combine day one when it calculates day two and day three and day four and day five so ultimately day five will then have the total amount of rain you've had in the past five days whereas if you had used daily it would just show how much rain there was on that day next we have calibrate factor so this is going to be what you'll calculate out for your rain gauge uh, and then plug it in here. This is how all the, the tipping bucket values are calculated. So if you um, if it was one millimeter per tip, then you would just put in a 100. Next we have the DHT Lux delay here. So that's programmed in. If you're going to use um, the DHT or the Lux sensors, um, that'll just tell how much delay you want to have uh, before it sends the next value. So this is in milliseconds, so right now we have 300 milliseconds, which would be 5 minutes. So if you want to increase the amount of time that these are sent, you'd make it a larger number. And if you want to decrease the amount of time, so send it in shorter intervals, you could make it a smaller number. Um, I would caution you, if you have a lot of sensors, don't make it too small because it could uh, interfere with other radio communications. All right, and then a little further down, I want to show you the rain window and the rain sensor threshold. So these um, will be overwritten by variable 1 and variable 2 in the um, once equivalent to a motion sensor. Uh, that was that sensor that you saw flashing in the intro of the video. Um, so the rain window is going to be the, the number of hours that it's used to calculate this, this value. And then the rain sensor threshold is going to be what it's tripped at um, in hundredths of a millimeter. So um, as soon as you plug this device in and it syncs with your gateway um, or with your controller rather it will pull those values from variable 1 and variable 2 if your controller has that option. So I use the variable which it does. So these immediately get overwritten um, but if you don't have that option then you could manually program it in here. All right, so that should be all you need to know to modify the code. Obviously, if you have any special circumstances uh, and you know what you're doing, you can go in and do whatever you want with the code. But hopefully that'll be all you need to do uh, if you're just working with the basic setup. Okay, so now I want to show you how to calculate your rain gauge uh, tipping bucket value. You can use this if you're using a custom rain gauge um, with a different volume than, than some of the others we're using here. So first off, I'm just going to show you my notes I used because... Um, I'm not the best at math, and uh, I thought it might help other people if they kind of see my notes and how I work through this, if you're at all like me. So um, first off, credit goes to wikihow.com slash build a rain gauge. Um, that's where I got this information. So if you want to read up more on it, you can check it out there. Um, so basically, you need to figure out what one tip equals in cubic millimeters. So here's kind of the formula that I use to work all this out. Okay, so first we want to find um, the water volume um, divided by the surface area, which is in uh, cubic centimeters times 10, and that's going to be your rate of rain in millimeters. So then we can take that and divide it by the number of tips um, that our bucket tipped as we're putting that water in. So I used one of those. Um, 500 millimeter measuring cups you use for cooking and I just dumped that in my rain gauge and counted the number of tips after I figured out um, the volume here. So to figure out the volume I needed to figure out what the um, the surface area was. So I actually went into SketchUp, uh, Google SketchUp, which I think is bought, bought out so now it's not Google anymore but it's a free um, program so then I just calculated out my volume or my measurements and kind of drew drew what it would look like here and then in the entity info it tells me exactly what that is in squared millimeters uh, so then the basically you just divide that by a hundred and then you get square centimeters so it's 93 square centimeters here I just put it in a SketchUp because mine has a weird shape, but if yours is a little bit easier to calculate, uh, there's plenty of resources online for calculating the volume of a shape. Then what I do is I take 500 milliliters and divide it by 93 um, square centimeters times 10, and then I get my millimeters of rain. 
Okay, so then I'll take my, my measuring cup full of 500 milliliters of water. I'll dump it in my rain gauge and count those tips. So it's the number of times my rain gauge tips for all of that 500 milliliters of water. So I did it uh, multiple times just because it was interesting how it varied over time. Um, and then I ended up tightening my screws a little bit to get me closer to the 0.6 range. So it was about 89 tips after I tightened up my screw to change the tip volume, or I guess the tip point in my rain gauge. So then I just took the 53.69 da 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 divided by 89, and then that got me to 0 0.60. So then I would just put that right there in the Arduino code. Now if you're using a Vera like me, you have a couple more steps that you need to do in order to get this to work. So first you need to upload some device files so the device can actually load into your Vera. So to do that, you go to Apps. Then you go to Develop Apps. By the way, I'm on UI5 still, so it's going to be slightly different if you're on UI7. So after I go to Develop Apps, I'm going to go to Loop Files here. And then I'm going to choose File. So what you're looking for are the JSON files and the two XML files here. So you'll find these on GitHub along with the Arduino code. So you'll download these to your desktop or downloads wherever on your local computer and then you'll just click on each one of these, hit open, and then it'll put it in this uh, next to the choose file. Then you select all three of them. I've done all this so I'm not going to actually do it, but when you've selected all three, you'll just hit uh, restart loop after upload and go and that will enable enable you to create a device. Now your device still won't be created until you actually um, upload your code to your rain gauge and um, plug in power and then hit include in the my sensors plug-in just like you would do with any other sensor but this will just enable it to work with your Vera. Okay now I'm on my devices tab I've already added it into my Vera and I am going to set my rain triggered device. So this will just allow me to have basically what looks like a motion sensor and then it will trigger based on the, num the amount of rain I have. So I showed you this at the very beginning, but this is how you would set up um, your thresholds. So once you've already added it, you'll click on the wrench. Once again, this is UI5. Then you go to the advanced tab scroll all the way down and then variable 1 and variable 2. So this is where you'd set the time and the amount of rain it's, it takes for this device to be triggered. So once you've set those how you want them, just hit the X, scroll all the way up, hit the save button, and that will sync down once an hour. Okay, so that's pretty much it. If you have any questions or comments, please use the MySensors forum. There's lots of helpful people there that will be able to provide any assistance if you get stuck. Thanks everyone.